by Toronto Dominion Bank, the bank where people make the difference. By Gulf Oil Canada Limited, its dealers, agents, and distributors across Canada. By Carling O'Keefe, brewers of O'Keefe Ale and Old Vienna Lager Beer. Experiencing sound trouble, which will be corrected momentarily. Actually, that picture really brings back memories. Did you ever play hockey outdoors when you were a kid? Yeah, and I played golf at the barber college, too. You remember what it was like? Speed freezing. Bill Jones, rink. don't shoot the puck into the corners because you'll lose it in the snow. The best player on our street was a girl. She was the biggest player, too. <laughs> hockey sure has changed. And Sport O'Keefe is happy to be participating in this great Russia-Canada series. Enjoy the game. We are experiencing sound trouble, which will be corrected momentarily. experiencing sound trouble which will be corrected momentarily.
are experiencing sound trouble, which will be corrected momentarily. sound trouble which will be corrected momentarily. experiencing sound trouble which will be corrected momentarily.
Canada is an energy-rich country that consumes over 45,000 gallons of oil every minute, over 63 million gallons every single day. And if we continue using oil at this rate without finding new sources, we'll be into a critical supply shortage in 10 to 15 years. We have to find more. This year, Gulf Canada will spend more than $110 million finding and developing new energy sources. It's an expensive proposition. A proposition that no industry could afford to make unless they knew they would be free to earn a reasonable return on the investment. To do that, we need government cooperation and your understanding. Because Gulf is confident the reserves are there, enough to meet our needs for generations to come. But we can't wait until the last minute. We have to invest the time and money now. Thank you. 
are experiencing sound trouble which will be corrected momentarily.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are experiencing extreme audio difficulties from Moscow. We are trying to get this problem remedied and rectified. In the meantime, CTV will continue with the video portion of the game. The score presently is Russia 2, Canada 1. The Canadian goal scored by Serge Bernier. The second goal for Russia scored by Vasiliev. That'll bring up to date with what's going on so far. The score, Russia 2, Canada 1. We are experiencing audio difficulties from Moscow. We are trying to get it rectified. In the meantime, we'll continue with the video portion of the game and hope you'll please stand by. Hit the 
goalpost. Here it is to the side of the net again. It's Rick Smith trying to tie him up. It's around the board to Vasiliev. Vasiliev back inside the Canadian zone as Cuba's blocked the back of the net. Now Paul Spear trying to come out with it. Long pass. Taken down the left side by Bobby Hall. Bobby Hall takes the shot. He's got left into the board. And Craig carries right on as Petrov holds the puck against the board and gets the whistle on the play. Perlman up, and every time you look up, the little fellow's got the puck, of course, he's keeping it, and it's come up with some great plays. Beginning to look like the Russians' skating ability and their pinpoint passing is starting to take it. And he's given them many good scoring opportunities. Back to the blue line now as it gets set for Ricky Lee. He shoots, and that's deflected wide as Gordy Howe tried to poke it to the corner of the net, and he poked it too wide. There's Baxter fighting for the puck as it's taken back to the blue line by Stapleton. That had a leg and comes all the way out to center right. Ricky Lee drops it back for Gordy Howe. Howe puts it over right onto the stick of Ralph Baxter. Baxter fighting for it inside the Soviet zone. There it is it's with uh, Baxter again, and he is hit there by Sickenkov. On the boards once more, the Canadians try to apply a little pressure. That's Mark Howe putting it out in front, and nobody there. Lebedev, Lebedev with Yakushev. He's in front with Shadrin. And he gets one. The shot goes wide to the goalpost. It's loose and finally cleared down the ice. Soviets are now, with that two goal lead, they're starting to set the people out in front. That is to say, breakaway men up at center right. Nylov opened on the first rush of the game from Harlamov to make it one to nothing for the Soviet Union. 15 around the Canadian defense. Certainly they're, they're just flying. They're that pinpoint passing and the threat of passing. Of course, he's uh, deep get of the members to get out of position. The Russians are taking every advantage. Now for Team Canada. Yes, uh, Rosie Poole. Passing it, but it's hit a leg and never got through. Now Mark Cardiff falls. Gets back up. The play is in front. Here it is. Getting set. Goes Cardiff. Cardiff is front. They shoot. Oh, and Come on, Larry, let's get the show on the road. We've been all over the place. What kind of affairs are going to be with the O'Keefe caravan? This is their dressing room, office, PA system. Okay, wise guy. You find it. Turn left here. Sorry. Guess we should have turned right. The O'Keefe caravan will go to any community event. If you'll tell us how to get there. Just give us a call at Sport O'Keefe. That has to be uh, help to the uh, players' box. He scored four goals so far for the Soviet Union, including two in the opening game here the other night. Now it's kind of at center. The draw comes back to the blue line. They fire it in. The Canadians are keeping it in there. It's right away in front. And Poole reached for the puck. It was in the air, and he couldn't touch it. Here's Poole again, trying to get it with a backhander. Back to the blue line to Howe. And the Soviets come racing out with Viktorov over to an Ethan. The pass is too far. Chris Bernier knocked the puck forward. They ruled that he touched it over his head, but it didn't appear to be anywhere near over his shoulder. Watch this play coming up here for the third time this period. Third Bernier has a heck of a chance and just can't get it up. There's a good check. Got us a loose puck. Now watch this great pass by JC. All he had to do was get it up. Trinchy coming up. The other made the save. That guy has been tested in the, ever since the first four or five minutes of his first period. He said to make some tough saves to keep that 2 nothing lead for the Soviet Union. Now the play. Back out to the Soviet line. A long pass to Harlamov. Harlamov fakes a shot. Oh, he pulls. A great shot. After faking it. Now it's back to the side of the net and it's taken by Mahavlis. Mahavlis down the left wing. A rink right pass over to Bruce McGregor. McGregor shoots. A great save there by Trekjack and it bounces wide. Looking for somebody. Here's McSmith. He shoots. And it's deflected wide of the goal by Mahavlis. 
Back to the blue line again, a Paul Spear. And that's knocked down. The Canadians are roaming all over the Soviet zone. Spear going in. His pass to the side of the net. Taken back and it's intercepted. Back comes Kailov. Number 13. Dumps it out in front to Petrov. Back over to the left wing as the hit is stick and bounce free. This is Petrov. Hit in there by Mahavlis. And the Soviets have it inside the Canadian zone. But the pass comes out to center right. Do nothing. Soviets over Canada in game six. Petrov. He's circling forward to his defenseman, Bustev. Bustev is a long shot. Turned aside easy by Jerry Cheevers. And Paul Spear takes it back of his own net before Johnny McKenzie. But he puts it out of the stick and Jagrin. Jagrin gets a second shot. And Cheevers has to kick that one out. The Canadians playing it a little bit loose back there and almost getting trapped. Back out to the blue line to Vasiliev. Vasiliev shoots. That's loose in front of the net as Shadman was waiting for the rebound. Got another real dandy going here. Now watch. You don't do the rush to let the screen shot go. Evers makes the big save and passes on the puck. Both goaltenders are coming up with just great performances from that trick check as this corner to rob the slide, Johnny. Well, he is, everybody knows, sensational. Where they found out in 72 how good he really was. Uh, he had to make some tough saves uh, in the first game here, but he's had to make some miraculous stops here. Frank Mahavlis had a great opportunity to get it on the score sheet, but he just popped it right by the, the goal. He just tossed that puck around once too often. And the Russians broke it up and come out of their own zone. Ladies and gentlemen, the picture troubles that you're experiencing right now are due to satellite problems between Moscow and London. Do not adjust your set. These problems aren't likely to be temporary. It's likely to be like this for most of the afternoon. Just reviewing. The picture problems that you're experiencing are due to satellite problems between Moscow and London. Do not adjust your set. Now it's inside the Canadian zone as McCraw back of the net. With McKenzie on the wing. Looking for Bobby Hull, but he's back to the blue line. There's Hull at center ice. Hull going in over that Soviet blue line, getting set for his shot. He drills it. It's loose in front of the net. And Kretschak has to come out to make the save the game as Andre Lacroix was standing there looking for the rebound. Combination with the cross center for Bobby Hall because Hall says, I want to wind up and I want somebody to throw it to me. And I need a right winger who's going to fight for it in the corner, and that's Johnny McKenzie. So it's pretty, it's been a pretty effective unit. The Russians are flooding the front of the net. They haven't been able to hit now with the consistency they'd like to. Now from the petty stop, it's taken by a drop back to the faction. Makes the drop pass. Ronnie Howe tried to tip it. And he is hit. There's Ronnie Howe going into the corner with you. Going to Howe, and Howe is hit from behind the game. Buck is still inside the zone, getting set, right out in front. A backhand shot is off the pad of the goalkeeper, Kretschak, but he was able to fall on him and hold on as Mark Howe had a great opportunity. Gordy is taking two or three good shots out there, and he's getting a little rougher. From the face off, the shot goes wide of the Soviet net. Back in the corner after it goes Mark Howe, number 11. Out in front. Bounces across the open goal mound. Now it's J.P. Trombley in the corner. Tied up by Kapustin. Kapustin holds it against the boys for the whistle. Here he's open with that 3-3 tie in Quebec City. And on a bounce back 4-1 in Toronto. Russians then 8-5 in Winnipeg. And on the blue, two goal lead to wind up with a 5 5 tie at Vancouver. And the Soviets won the opening game here 3 to 2. And that's now the applause for the great player, Alexander Moltev. Shot is well wide of the net from the point, but the Soviets, led by Moltev, now bring it out to center. It's picked up. 
Here goes Tromblay. Tromblay to Baxter looking for somebody to pass it to. He bounces it in front of the net. And Mark Howe was off balance. There's Gordy Howe running at an Eason. Here's a shot from the side. And off the glove of the goalkeeper, Tretjak. It's back in the net to Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe waits. Which way is he going to come up with it? They've got Baxter tied up the jam at it. And Tretjak holds it against the post. Банк, где люди составляют разницу. Ladies and gentlemen, we have lost sound again somewhere between Moscow and London. We ask you to please stand by. We are trying to rectify the problem, and we'll continue with the video portion of the program. goes off for the misconduct penalty. Rick Smith is in for a two-minute penalty. And we're having uh, audio problems is the indication we get, but so far it's back again. Uh, and we can tell you that the penalty patient was cross-checking to Rick Smith. Tromley in front of the net. Tromley fooled him, went around the goal again. 
Out to Stableden, and down the ice it goes near the Russian blue line. Dusev, the pass up on the left wing, Harlamov winding up. He gets across center, Harlamov had a stick lifted by McGregor. McGregor got a stick across the shoulder, but Henderson carries on. Henderson, pass it back into Stapleton. Stapleton out. Oh, Mark Howe down to Henderson. A shot, he didn't get it away. Now he tries to pull his way through. He's upended in the corner. The play goes right on. Vasiliev upending Henderson. The Canadian fans wanted a penalty, but no penalty coming. The Russians, a man advantage. Vigulov cutting for the net. Mark Howe after him. Vigulov gets away from Howe. Vigulov still has it over on this side. Petrov had a shot blocked. And it's tipped away by Trombley. And now the Canadians hold it in their own zone. Henderson getting a whistle as he wants to get off, no doubt, for a change. And a face-off coming up in the Canadian zone to the right. Face-off to the right of Cheever. Two to one is the score. Russia leading. Chad Reen with Yakushev and Vikulov. Lukashenko and Tagankov. The two defensemen. Stapleton going over to the penalty bench. Bob Troy has coach Billy Harris uh, fight to keep Stapleton and J.C. split for this game with other parents in trouble because these penalties have to be used this duo. Stock gets the draw back to the Now it's taken by Yakushev. 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 Over there on the right side to Wikulov. Wikulov 18 in the corner. Bumped in there by Whitey Stapleton. Goes around to Yakushev, number 15. Yakushev gets the little bouncing shot in front of the net, and Shadron takes the rebound. Shadron trying to get set. Back in front, it's knocked down by J.C. Trombley, and he fires into center. Trombley and Stapleton have been just sensational throughout this series. Here comes Wikulov trying to get through. Rick Smith is back on the ice, and he fires it up into the crowd. is over at this end, but we just now have word that apparently our line was crossed to the TVC radio line. And now we go back to Bobby Hall, winding up at his own blue line with McCraw moving over on the wing. Here's a drop pass for Spear. Now they race into the corner, Paul Schmier. Trying to put it out in front for Johnny McKenzie, but he couldn't get it. Back at the blue line, Lebedev with Shadrin, two men back, looking for that drop pass, and Yakushev is right out there in front. They bang at the loose puck. Paul Schmier clears to center. It's taken back over here by number uh, 21, Shadilov, and it's over to Bobby Hall. Hall, ahead to Lacroix. Lacroix, back over to Schmier. And they got that passing combination going. Trying to get Hull set up for his shot, but they're called offside at the Soviet blue line. Twenty-one seconds left in this penalty. The clocks are partly covered by the overhanging rafters here. We have to glance at these, and we're just guessing at the time. But it appears to be twenty-one seconds left in the first period. For the Soviets leading Canada two to one. And he's it on the face off. Number 22 feeds it up on the right side to Vikulov inside the Canadian zone. Has it knocked off of his stick. And he puts it back out to the blue line. It's offside. Clock shows eight and a half seconds left. The referee, Billy Harris really exploded down there. The referee was going to let that call go. I couldn't believe it. The puck was a good foot outside the blue line. And finally, one of the linesmen came over and called it. And now, they're bringing the faceoff back into the Soviet zone to the left. Well, that can happen when you're a man short and you touch the puck over your shoulder in the opposing zone unless they call it the intentional offside, and that's what they've done. 
Now the puck comes back out to uh, Paul Smear. Smear is hooked. The puck slides down into Soto's territory as he does the sound to end the first period. It's been a wild and woolly first period. First period where we've encountered uh, several technical difficulties on our transmission to Canada. Uh, what happened, it was uh, Mihailov opened the scoring on the first rush of the game. And then uh, Marty Howe took an elbowing cut to leave Vasiliev on a great play went in to beat uh, the goalkeeper Jerry Cheevers on a little backhand shot up above him. Paul Schmier then drilled one from the blue line to make it a two to one hockey game. And that's the way it stands at the end of this uh, first period. So with the score, the Soviets two and Canada one. This is game six for Moscow. Buddy, winning is not all that important. It's participation that counts. Hey, what's going on over there? What is, hey, that's a horse. He can't go in there like that. I've always known she couldn't run, but I, this is the first time she's gone the wrong way. He shouldn't go that way. She's going to the winner's circle, to the winner's circle. Pete, what are you doing here? This is the winner's circle. I knew this was the only way you guys could have got here. Well, Fred and Pete, she, she's probably the worst looking horse we ever saw, but I don't know what you guys, I love her. What about the time that she broke the track record? Hold on, that was on her debut, but that wasn't for speed, that was for attendance. Hey, this calls for a celebration. Freddy, I will drink to that. Come on, Annabelle. Come on, Pete. Hey, I know what you guys, what I really like about O.P. Vale, it's an easy drinking deal. Don't you think so? Well, it sure goes down good. And what a great way to end a great day. Pete, Fred, to our lovely lady, Annabelle. To Annabelle. And here's to you with O'Keefe. Takes the shot. Gordy goes in behind the net. Watch this now. Watch Curran. Look at here. Look at him pull the feet from under how. Look at Gordy take a swing at it. Gordy argued with the referee. Nothing was done. Now watch the top of your screen. Oh, watch. Look at <laughs> Ouch. That hurt. In this series, watch the sticks and watch the elbows. Don't watch the butt. See that spear up underneath the arm? Look at the kick. Watch in front of the net. The Russians get an excellent scoring kick. 
Right. This year we've got something very special for Canadian hockey fans and the WHA. The Quebec Nordiques, Toronto Toros, my own Winnipeg Jets, the Edmonton Oilers and the Vancouver Blazers are all in one new division, the Canadian division. That means we'll play more games in Canada against our Canadian competition. Add that kind of fan interest to what you'll see from the rest of the WHA, where high round draft picks and prized European and North American additions have made all teams stronger, and you'll know why season tickets are really moving. There are still some good season tickets available, but you'll have to act quickly if you want to be part of a great league, not only this year, but for years to come. Call the team ticket office in your area right now. There'll be someone there to answer your questions and deal with your requests. Join the WHA. You'll have a lot of fun. See exciting hockey, and you'll find it's something the entire family can get involved in. I mean, we've already proven that, haven't we, people? Oh, right there, there Bob. Is. No matter where you travel outside of home, uh, things will have to be a little bit different. The food different, the water different, the accommodations, and of course, that's very much the case here in Moscow. It's June 10 to 74. They're going to take care of some of that problem by prearranging for food and other supplies to be sent in. Here's the story of how these teams are kept in Moscow.
Cruise in the special flights are soon loaded and headed for Moscow. The pregame meal of Canadian steaks six or seven hours before a game is strictly a personal affair. Then they try to relax before the game. But after the game, the players get together with their wives and some of their children to enjoy some of the goodies from home. The Spartan existence is a theory of some coaches, but for head coach Billy Harris, he believes that togetherness is the means to success. And make no mistake, those supplies that are sent in to help this team have been a tremendous aid to it here in Moscow. The media hasn't seen too much of it, but the team is certainly well fed and uh, is getting enough refreshments. Let's bring in Howie Meeker now. He is always refreshing. And talk about some of the uh, highlights of the first period. Howie, uh, it had to be again a brilliant period of hockey. They seem to get better as the games go on, don't they? I would think it was as good as any period of hockey we saw, excluding the last 10 minutes of the first period of Vancouver. They were just fire wagoning up and down the ice with great passing, good checking, and oh, actually goaltending at both ends. Chuck Jack, I thought, had made some outstanding saves to produce this 2-1 score. In other words, to keep Canada from at least being at a tie. Well, McGregor could have had one. Bernier could have had three. three Bernier times. made three great plays once he hit the crossbar after having tried it down. The next time, I'm counting the goal. Who oh, put it right on his sister's head? Mark Tyson, roll it in. It slipped from those lightning pads. The next time, he had him down, right out to dinner, and couldn't get it up high. Well, who finally did get one in to make it 2-1 to one now. And, of course, after the Soviets great start the two uh, fast goals they had to have a goal i thought before that period ended to really stay in this hockey game well, i was sitting up there thinking when it's two to nothing whoever scores an eight goal wins and uh, we happen to get it so we're back in it but certainly she was at the other end rob dan harman off on a couple of occasions and that first goal something i'm going to use it as a replay because everybody said well here's canada had good puck control all the way now they're rushing had the puck and gave it to us they don't think that error too often. Now there's Bernier. Didn't get an assist, but he made the key play. Instead of throwing it in front of the net where there's signs of red sweater, he put it out to the defenseman. And the defenseman kept it low and bang, we popped it in. Just a, a great goal and back in the hockey game and certainly we deserve to be within one goal of it. All right, there's Bernier making the pass. The fellow that just had a great first period, an outstanding first period. Defense leaning on the shot and keeping it down. Kids, that's the key. He hit the ice first to keep the puck down. And but the, 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 one, the one you would like to show as an instructional piece of information is the goal by Mikhailov, the first goal. Right? Oh, unbelievable. Because everybody says the Russians go over pass. Well, finally, uh, Harmanov come down and really had Sheevers well out, so far out that uh, he couldn't make another move. Instead of shooting the puck, he couldn't go to the sequel. Instead of shooting the puck, laid it over and he put it in. A heck of a goal. Well, a great second period coming up, Howie. We'll see you after the second is over. And after the first period now, the score is the Soviets 2 and Canada 1. This is Game 6 for Moscow. Canada is an oil-rich country. But if we're going to stay that way, we have to find new sources of oil long before our present supplies run out. It takes time, it takes know-how, and it takes an awful lot of money. Because you don't find oil just by drilling a hole. You have to know where to look. And even then, the odds are strongly against finding a productive well. Gulf Canada plans to spend over $110 million this year trying to find and develop the new energy resources that will help keep Canada running smoothly in the years ahead. This money comes mainly from Gulf Canada revenues. And if you think this is the kind of job we should be doing with our money, you get the nail right on the head. The money we spend today will keep the oil flowing tomorrow. That's right. Despite meetings all day and despite repeated assurances from the Russian officials, uh, we have not received the tickets that have been promised. As you know, our official party 
were seated in seats where, as a matter of fact, you weren't even looking at the ice. You were looking at a wall, and you had to turn at a 90-degree angle to see the ice. Like in football, it might be, say, 40 yards behind the goal line. That is correct. As a matter of fact, you're not even, you get the feeling you're not even in the building. I might say that all the officials of Hockey Canada, all the officials of the steering committee, and the WHA and the CAHA and their wives have boycotted this game as a formal protest against the treatment given to our uh, officials and our owners and the wives and the fans generally, and particularly the players' wives. We've had a terrible time getting tickets for the players' wives. As a matter of fact, this evening we weren't even able to get those together. So how does the uh, next two games look as far as improving the situation? Well, well we sincerely hope it will be improved vastly. Mr. Mr. Uh, Jack Devine of the CAHA and Mr. Gordon Duke of the CAHA, Mr. Lou Lefebvre, who is acting chairman of uh, the Team Canada, as well as sport, the director of Sports Canada, Mr. Ben Haskin, who is chairman of Team Canada, and chairman of the WHA, and Mr. Dennis Murphy, as president of the WHA, and other officials are just not here as, as that shows the sincerity of our protest. enjoyed it in any way. Ron, thank you very much for standing by between periods. That second period looks to be almost set to go now, and stand by for more exciting hockey action between these two teams. Let's go up for it with Johnny Eason, how he Well, thank you, Don. The players are just returning to the ice, and as a matter of fact, they have just announced the presentation by the Soviet Ice Hockey Federation to Moltsev, Alexander Moltsev, and to Jerry Cheevers as the two most outstanding players in the game here on Tuesday night. There will be other presentations made from game to game. There will be the most valuable players made to Jerry. There's a good look at our friend. Cast the game down down on the point. Vasiliev, this could be Vasiliev's goal, it is. Vasiliev, uh, that's the goal that, uh, here the second goal that Jerry Cheevers thought was going to go up. Or at least was going to stay down. Could have robbed the defenseman and how he throws it up high and into the net. Look at this kid's game. This is the amazing part of it. He guts around JC. He could have cut a little sooner, but he had run into Stapleton. Goes from his forehand to his backhand, comes it upstairs. That's the only possible spot he could have put it. The only error he could have made is that he fell down. He did that, and the video took uh, every opportunity, and I think scored just a great goal. But his speed, he got that goal for him, John. Vasiliev uh, has picked up his, his second goal of the series. Uh, he also has one assist for a total of three points. Bobby Hull still leads the series with six goals and two assists for eight points. Andre Lacroix has one goal and five assists for six points. And then we have uh, Alexander Yankashev with five goals. And uh, then uh, Petrov goals and uh, three assists. Vladimir Petrov uh, has the second record score with a total of five points. Mihailov now has with his goal tonight, his third goal of the, of the series, plus two assists as a total of five. So they have three Russians with five points apiece as we open. Sutures, they tell me they have this paste, acro, acro something late. <laughs> and uh, anyway, they, they open this particular tube or container and push it in the cup and close the loan by hand. And in five seconds, it hardens. And this way, uh, you don't miss a shift. The guy got right back on for the next shift. And in two or three days, it's just peeled away. That's something I imagine that the boxing fraternity would like to have their hands on. A uh, good cut man, of course, uh, they're invaluable along the way. Acro, acrolate, I think is the proper medical uh, term for it. You've done the thing. You've it has just come thing. to me. <laughs> but it's interesting, Lebedev was cut in one of the games in Canada, and it was a rather deep gash. And uh, they used this particular treatment so that he wouldn't miss any ice time. But uh, they frantically called for Jerry Wilson a few seconds later and said the bleeding 
is uh, still occurring through this particular substance. And Jerry had to cut this stuff out. It was hardened. He had to cut it out. And then, of course, go ahead with the North American uh, routine of putting the sutures in. So it doesn't work all the time. Well, we're set to go, Fred, for the second period. It's 2-1, to one, Russia leading. And play is underway with Holland Stapleton exchanging passes. Down it goes in the far wing. Harlamov gave it to Petrov. It bounced by him. Stapleton comes up with Gordy Howe. That pass was a little too far. Howe in after Vasilyev behind the net. Howe trying to get his stick loose. Kicked it out to the blue line. Lee golfed it to the corner for Gordy Howe. Howe over to Backstrom. Backstrom tried to center it. It comes back near the line. Stapleton shoots. The rebound back to Stapleton again. He rolled it in front of the net. Here's Ricky Lee. Some pressure on now as Team Canada come to life in the early going of the second period. A long pass at center. Petrov without a stick is kicking the puck down the ice, and he does. But Lee has it in his own zone for Team Canada. Lee coming out slowly. Now he's over the blue line, coming down with Maxstrom on the move. Maxstrom cuts to the corner by Gustav. He tried to get it back. He did. A shot by Howe is deflected, went high. And Tretiak, taking no chances, reached up and held it. Mark Tardif still in the penalty box on the far side, serving out his 10-minute misconduct, called at 16.38. And that breaks up the French selection line, which was reunited upon Tardif's return to the uh, squad coming into Moscow from Canada. And which spread, incidentally, in the first few minutes of the game, looked very hot indeed. By far our best line. Bernier has three golden scoring opportunities. One hit the crossbar. And Hull, of course, got a goal. Two to one, Russia leading. And Russia on the move again near the Canadian blue line. Shadreen was stopped. Shadreen again in the center ice right area, bumped off the puck by Bernier. Now it's J.C. Tromley losing it at center ice. Shadreen left it for Yakushev ahead to Lebedev. Lebedev backs up over center, over for Shadreen, who is open. Or rather, Shadilov back to Shadreen. He took a shot. Cheever stopped it. The rebound to Lebedev. He took a swipe at it. Gets it back to Shadilov. A shot. High drive is blocked in front by Bernier. Bobby Hall in his own zone. Lost it to Lebedev. Out to the blue line. Sagankov took a shot and hit Hall. And he nearly got a breakaway. But Shadilov was back covering up. Sagankov in his own zone. Made it behind the net, has it again, got away from Hull for Lebedev. Lebedev stopped by Hull, and Bernier takes over. Bernier with Hull, in on the wing against Shadilov in the corner. Shadilov poked at it. Bernier takes it, centered it. Here's Marty Howe, a backhand shot. An easy drive was stopped, and it was cleared out to center ice. Marty Howe lost it to Yakushev. Yakushev's rink-wide pass went to Lebedev. He hopped in over the blue line. Lebedev with Bernier after him. Lebedev checked behind the net. The puck goes to the other side. Yakushev couldn't stop Bernier out to Hull. Hull going down with Hull on the move again. Hull gets in the Hull. And his stick was lifted by Stigankov. Two to one Russia. Team Canada looking a little better now and coming close again in the second period. Mahovlich lost it. Hull lost it at center. And Marty Hull comes across center. A pass in on the wing for McGregor. McGregor picked it up behind the goal, then lost it, and Shadreen is coming out. Ahead of him, Vikulov, the long pass ahead, couldn't hit Malsev, but bounced by him. Vikulov is stopped in the corner. Now it's Team Canada, three of them coming to center. McGregor on the wing, going in with Mahovlich, into Mahovlich! And he failed to tip it by Tretiak, he reached out for it, just couldn't make contact. Henderson falls down, now the play goes right on. Mahovlich went into the fray. Mahovlich comes up front with it. Here's a shot by Schmier, and his shot was wide. Rick Smith gets a drive away, and Petjak loved that one as he covered on the short side. But I'll tell you, Team Canada is looking 100% better now. They trail 2-1 to one this game, coming to you from the Luzniki Sports Palace in Moscow. Two to one is the score. Russia out front as it goes back of the net for Lachenko. On the board, Schmier stopped it from the blue line. Vigulov couldn't take it away from him. Schmier on the board, cuts for the net, tries to drive in front. Mahovlich shoots! Petjak kicked that one out. Mahovlich was tied up in front by Judith. And coming back for Kuzin, he took the drive. That was stopped in front to Pustin, rather. 
And Cheever's held it long enough for the whistle to go, and there will be a face-off in the Canadian zone to the right of Jerry Cheever. Houston, the well-regarded young man who's been out the last few games with a broken finger, but he's back in there now, threaded into the lineup. His small step came over the bench very slowly. He's one of their top guns. And it's in into the face-off circle against Lacroix of Canada. Two to one, Russia. Lacroix got the draw for Hull behind the net. He gives it to Stapleton. Stapleton on the fourth, coming out with Lacroix. The rink wide pass was stopped, but Hull has it. Hull speeding in. Hull was stopped in front and couldn't shoot it. Kapustin turning around in his own zone, goes behind the net, gave it to shoot him. He cleared it up on the right wing. That'll go all the way for icing likely. It does. It's icing against the Soviet Union. And the play will come back to the right of Tretiak. They played four minutes and nine seconds of the second period. Based off to the right of Tretiak. Vasiliev comes out of the defense again. Will Gusev. Lacroix to hole. Shoot. And his low shot is stopped by Tretiak. A rather easy shot for Hull. Lacroix centered it, Petyak stopping it, and he's going to hold it, I think. Yes, he does. Nobody in front of him covering up, and he decides to hold it until they get organized, and they'll do it all over again to the right of the Russian goaltender. Hull standing behind Lacroix, who undoubtedly will try to get the draw back to Bobby Hull. Huck has dropped in, and it went to Mikhailov, to Harlamov, speeding away. Arlamov up near the blue line, circles back again. He's a great skater, played it back to Gusev. Gusev up on the line. And it's Petrov in with Mikhailov across the blue line. Mikhailov poked it into Arlamov, had his stick lifted. And Bobby Hall, covering up, cleared it back of the Canadian net. He got away from Mikhailov, dropped it in the corner. Now a pass for Stapleton from Lee. Stableton up for Lacroix. Lacroix stopped, but Stableton playing the play brings it on himself. Gets over center ice. Stableton still has it for Lacroix. Lacroix over the line. Dropped it in for Bobby Hall, but Petrov cleared it away. A break for Harlamov. Speeding in. He's all alone. And Cheevers made the save with Ricky Lee getting back to harass Harlamov. The Russian fans wanted a penalty on it. Bobby Hall for Stableton in the corner. He left it for Lacroix, and here he comes. A pass to McKenzie, back to Lacroix, to McKenzie. McKenzie down the boards on the right wing. A pass to Hall, it was too high, and went by him. Petrov comes out again, in for Mikhailov, and Harlamov, the shot is blocked, the rebound. Mikhailov couldn't center it. Harlamov was bumped by Stableton in front of the net. And the puck comes out to McKenzie, who's down to center. McKenzie in on the right wing, in front for Bobby Hall. And Hull couldn't get by Petrov. Petrov's pass down to Lebedev. He's coming in with Harlamov. Lebedev to Harlamov, and he's jammed out of the play by Backstrom. Into the corner. Backstrom got a skate down on it, and there's no further play. Soviet Union 2. He's Canada 1. Let's pause briefly for station identification. Five seconds, Mikhailov from Harlamov, and then Vasiliev, while Marty Howe was serving a two-minute penalty for elbowing at 2.43. It wasn't until 15.56 when Rajahu tipped in a shot by Schmier. Their shot came from the blue line, and who standing off the crease, tipped it in. And that's been the story of the scoring. Two to one, Russia leading. The investigation across the way is determined. Misconduct, when it will expire, Gordon Howe escorting the referee Dombrowski over there to check on him. Based off in the Team Canada zone, Ralph Baxter in there to the right of Cheevers. Now Stapleton has gone to Dombrowski, and Stapleton coming toward the Team Canada bench. The bench is immediately below it, the penalty box on the far side. So we're all set to start as Baxter moves in. Bob, Chad Reams, 
against Backstrom on the faceoff. Kicked it over to one side. It goes back of the goal, and Trombley takes it. A long pass went down the ice, and Howe couldn't catch up to it. Zagankov was back quickly. Zagankov put it up, Murky, Murky, and the score! Gordy Howe for Mark Howe, and it's a tied ball game, 2-2. Gordy Howe jumping in front of the net as the gun cop fed it back near the blue line and he put it on right, right on Mark Howe's stick. He took the shot and Gordy speeding in front of the net just tipped it in and it's a 2-2 tie. 6-15 the time. Well, the family doing it there and uh, it's set the Canadian crowd into an uproar there behind that particular net. The banners come out. It's a new hockey game here, and Team Canada seems to have come back right at itself and uh, putting itself into position here to uh, take over and take command of this game. If they can just maintain the discipline deportment, keep up this checking. Cheevers has supplied the goaltending. He's, he's been simply splendid in there, and how now equaling the count with his third son, Mark, at 6.50. See the delight written all over the fellow's face. What well, he saw that red light go on. Tip in from Mark Howe. Here's Mark again on the left wing. Took a shot in front of Gordy, and he's tied up by Shadalov. Play goes right on, right in front of the net it comes. And Mark Howe is too well covered. Backstrom on the board. Gordy Howe chopped at it, couldn't keep it in. It was cleared out to center ice by Shadreen. J.C. Trombley lost it to Lebedev. Lebedev put it on Gordy Howe's stick, and he's in front of his own net. Now Howe in the corner, stick handling with it. Finally had it knocked away by Lebedev. Now Howe again tried to bring it out. The gun caught, stopped it, shot it wide of the net. Cheevers tipped it away for Trombley. Over on the other side is Gordy Howe. Got a lot watching him. Backstrom trying to catch up to it. The gun cop is back in his own zone. Chad Ream coming out with a pass to Lebedev. Yakushev moving in. Yakushev was bumped by Marty Howe and couldn't go through. Then it was cleared down the ice. It'll be icing if it reaches the goal line, and it does. Icing against Team Canada. A 2-2 hockey game. You're listening to Team Canada 74 on CBC Radio. Cardiff, who's back on, having served his misconduct penalty on the boards in the Russian zone. In for a hole behind the net. Who tried to center it. Bernier is after it. It's cleared down the ice by the Russians as this French line is doing great work for Canada. Bernier, who and Cardiff looking very good tonight. Now in their own zone, Cardiff pumped it ahead for Bernier and who the three of them together down the left wing. Hull tried to get by the big defenseman shooting was knocked to the ice, but Tardif went in quickly. Tardif centered it to the side of the net, and Luchenko bringing it out for Russia. Couldn't get by Tardif. In for Bernier. Bernier centered it right back in front, and Shudin was there. In on the left wing, the Russians bring it out to boost him going down. Over the line, Zikulov, and it's the score! Anderson, what a shot through the legs of Gary Cheevers. And the Russians take the lead again at 8.22. That makes it 3 to 2. Three on two break. And the Soviets very speedily coming back. Good passing. And that swift shot beating Cheevers. So it's 3 to 2 for the Soviet Union at 8.22. Play underway again. Stapleton fed it ahead for Henderson too far. And Mikhailov, a long pass for Harlamov, is tapped away from him, but it was offside anyway, up over center ice. Harlamov looking for the long pass. He got it, but he was offside when he picked it up. Henderson's first goal, and Vikulov draws an assist.
They stop inside the blue line. It's cleared in from center ice by Lee. Behind the net, Gusev on the board. Coming out for Russia, stopped by Frank Mahovlich. McGregor and Henderson are in there. McGregor got in front and couldn't hang on to it. Gusev shoots it to the line. Stopped by Henderson. Henderson got it loose but lost control of it. And it goes back to the net. Arlamov in the corner, a long pass up on the wing for Mikhailov and Petrov. Mikhailov over the blue line, tried to stick handle through. Henderson got back to clear it. Arlamov picked it up, shoots it back of the net. Mikhailov is unmolested, going after it. He left it for Petrov, and now it's Stapleton. Out for McGregor, the pass was behind McGregor, and Gusev is back in his own zone. Three to two, Russia leading. Now this is Gusev, stopped by... McGregor and Mahovlich with him. McGregor is stopped in front of the net, couldn't make a play. Bobby Hall up the blue line, took a quick shot. That's stopped by Redyak. Hall went in after it again and couldn't find it. Lebedev speeds out, down to Harlamov. Harlamov gets set, back to Petrov. And the shot is stopped by Cheevers. Frank Mahovlich up to McKenzie at center with Hall. Hall is stopped by Gusev, back in for Russia. The drive, that one was wide of the short side. Frank Mahovlich, stopped by Lebedev, it goes back of the net, Petrov and Stapleton go after it, and it's lead to the corner with McKenzie and ready to help. In the house by Rick Lee, and there's no further play. A 3-2 hockey game, the Soviet Union leading this game, coming to you from the Luzniki Sports Palace in Moscow. off to the right of Cheevers. 3-2 Russia. J.C. Tromblay behind the net for Canada. Getting set from the corner. Tromblay's pass down to Lacroix. He's all alone there. And three of them. It bounces near. And Shadreen brought it. Again, Tromblay goes to the corner. Drops it there. Hardy Howe tips it ahead for Bobby Hall on the left wing board coming out. Hall backs up in his own zone with Tomblay handling the puck, or rather, Marty Howe again, giving it to Hall. Hall gets away across his own line. Tries to get by Shadreen with stop. Now Hall takes it in the center ice area, waits for Lacroix to come back out, and J.C. Tomblay gives it to McKenzie. McKenzie shoots, and Fred Yank stopped it on the short side. McKenzie and Sagunkov bump together. Out to the blue line, Marty Howe has a chance now. He takes his shot. Marty out of the corner, back of the net. Try to center it. J.C. Tromblay has it. Tromblay on a bad angle. Marty Howe gets set. The goal post has been moved. The entire net shoved out of position, and the play was called. Doesn't take much to move those nets, Fred. Well, there was a lot of traffic. Lebedev trying to tie up Bobby Hull right in the crease. Tretjak standing there, and uh, the bulk of the three men just moving the net off its moorings. But uh, I'll tell you, that is not a good place to be if you're an offensive hockey player moving in there because uh, the uh, work, the stick work, and uh, the body work in there is just tremendous. And Dombrowski's just taking a look at it as a spectator. They saw to the right of Tretiak. Gordy Howe got the draw. Mark Howe couldn't shoot it. And Kapustin picks it up quickly and comes out over the line. A long pass ahead was... Tipped into the Canadian zone. Anderson went in after Rick Smith. Behind the net, Mark Howe was given a jolt by Kapustin. Then Mark Howe took Kapustin out of the play. They hold it on the board. Schmier and Vikulov pushing at each other. Play was called for a face-off in the Canadian zone. Nearing the 12-minute mark of this second period, 3-2 Russia leading. They line up for the draw, here it is, it bounces in front, and Mark Howe, nice bit of stick handling to come out with his father, Gordy, on the left, and Gordy Howe stopped it at the blue line, gave it to Schmier, Schmier into the corner, Backstrom went over after it, he was slow at moving for it, Gordy Howe takes it, Mark Howe back of the net, in front it goes, and out near the line, Smith took a shot, right in front, Backstrom couldn't set up Gordy Howe, and Backstrom is pulled over by Luchenko, Backstrom hollering for the penalty. It's cleared down the ice by the Russians. And icing called. Well, that's the type of inconsistent officiating and the fans back of Tretiak in the section, mainly populated by Canadians, venting their displeasure with lusty booing. 
Face off to the left of Tretiak now. Three to two, Russia leading. Backstrom, Mark Howe, and Gordy Howe. From the face off, Backstrom tying up his man. And then it got in front where Gordy Howe failed to get a stick on it. Backstrom carried the defenseman Vasiliev into the boards. Now they fight for possession. Vasiliev and Backstrom. They're swinging over there. Vasiliev took a swing at Backstrom. But the play goes right on. No penalty called. Harlamov dropped it for Petrov. He tried to set up Mikhailov in front. Smith gloved it away. Now a penalty is called, I believe, against Canada. Mikhailov was bumped down in the corner by Mark Howe. And now Backstrom is arguing with the referee. And this is where they just have to keep their cool somehow and not fight back. A cross-checking penalty, this one against Mark Howe. This game is coming to you from the Luzniki Sports Palace in Moscow.
as I termed it in a report, a tasteless Polish joke. Beyond the capabilities of these men, and yet they're threaded in. Deeply distressing. Here's Bob. Well, Team Canada is short-handed now. They're playing five against four. Backstrom in the center ice area will try to rag it a bit. Gives it to Tremblay. Up to Stapleton. Stapleton ahead to Backstrom. Backstrom tried to cut in. Nearly got by Shetilov. Jet Green coming back with Yakushev. Yakushev on the board. Fed it back to the blue line. To Gunkov into Yakushev again. Yakushev along the board just waiting with it. Now he spins around in the zone, gets it back to Sagunkov, to Shadilov on the side, he might shoot it. He gives it to Sagunkov. It's clubbed ahead by Stapleton. Now again, Sagunkov to Shadilov. Shadilov gets set, Team Canada playing the box well. The drive is stopped by Cheevers. Cheevers is slow in getting up, he's down on one knee, now he's back up. Along the boards again. Shadilov near the blue line, looking to work it free to somebody. Sagunkov shoots it, and his shot was wide. It comes up to Shadilov. Shadilov gets set. Team Canada just wasting time and standing in front of the Russians. They don't know what to do. Back to Shadilov again. Shadilov shoots. Scores! Shadilov drill one, and it went by everybody, including Cheevers. That's another power play goal for Russia, and it makes it four to two. Well, that brought the fans here, the Soviet fans up, and uh, certainly put the damper on the Canadian contingent. A second power play goal, Shatlov doing the damage, and that brings Marty uh, or Markow out of the penalty box, and the team now will play it. At uh, five aside, Siganov, Siganov drew an assist on the play. At center ice, Frank Mahalovich, Team Canada down two goals now with Henderson. Henderson lost it, a two-man break. It's Nikolov breaking in all alone. Nikolov right in, and Cheevers came flying out, lost his stick in the process. Frank Mahalovich goes behind the goal. Mahalovich left it for Smith. Cheevers still without his stick. Schmier tries to, to shoot it down the ice, and he does. And Rick Smith gets the goal stick back for Cheevers. Good play by Cheevers on that break. Vikulov again trying to move in against Schmier. Schmier in the corner. Knocked it behind the net for Frank Mahovlich. Out for Henderson. He's coming out slowly. Henderson near center ice. Goes up near the Russian blue line. Still has it. Then loses it. And they clear it down, shoot it into Vikulov. Vikulov tries to shoot it, had his stick lifted by Henderson. And Schmier lost it near the side of the net, goes back to pick it up. Anderson after him, it's in the mesh. And there's no further play, they'll get a face-off in the Canadian zone to the left. You're listening to Team Canada 74 on CBC Radio. The face-off play underway again, and Hull comes out to center. Hull with Lee. Lee cutting up near the blue line to Bobby Hall. He took a shot that was blocked by Sagunkov, and the Russian Petrov bringing it out. Gusev across his own blue line to center ice. Gusev pushed it ahead for Harlamov. Tableton watching him. They get their sticks up right away. Harlamov forgot about the puck entirely. Lee is coming back. Rick Lee over the line, just in front. Wait. Pass it into Hull, and Hull has stopped. He centered it, but Petyak covered it easily. A pass to Harlamov went by him. Stableton takes it near his own blue line. Gives it to Rick Lee. 42, Russia leading. With 3.50 left to play in the second period. Stableton bringing it in. Stableton across the line, giving it to Hull. He lost it, 
And he has to come back to center. Lacroix has to get back on side as Hull pass it over to the far side for Lacroix. The Russians lining up at the blue line. Here's Hull with a chance. And a shot stopped by Tretiak. Hull let, letting his shot go, but put it right up the goaltender. Now Gustav working it out with Petrov down to center ice. Petrov up over the Canadian line, dropping it back, and Bobby Hull picked it up. Hull coming back all alone. He has three Russians to beat. Shoot! And stopped by Tretiak again. Four to two the score with 3.10 left to play in the second period. Russia out front. Chad Reen circling at center. Coming up over the line. He got by Tremblay. Chad Reen couldn't stop. Hull who came back to check him. Now Rajan Hull coming out. Weaving his way near the blue line for Bernier. Coming up with Marty Howe. Bernier is bumped at the blue line by Lutenko. And now Bernier is given another goal. The play is called. Let's see if there's going to be a penalty. Lutenko and Chadreen each had a go at Bernier. Chadreen was the second man in. And the Canadian fans are hollering again for a penalty. But there's no penalty coming. And that one happened. Well, the referee had to get out of the way, actually. He couldn't be any closer. Just couldn't be any closer to it. Now Kalagan has called his uh, two forwards in. That's uh, Mikhailov and Shadri coming in there along with big number three, Vladimir Lutsenko and uh, Kalagan giving them some instruction as Billy Harris now calls, oh, looks as though he's trying to get the attention of J.C. Trombley. Now he calls Bernier over. There's a good deal of room in front of the bench, so you can go right to the uh, rink side. He's called his uh, foreman in now. Team Canada in there, away white with the red trim. The Soviet team in uh, all red. Red helmets, red sweaters, pants, stockings. And the only thing uh, really red, uh, the back ladies, I'll tell you, they, uh, they just have to be so frustrated and upset with the tenor of this hockey game, which has come unstrung in this second period. Mikhailov backs up in his own zone. Laid it ahead for Shadreen coming down at center. The pass is shooting on the right wing. He was stopped at the line by Hu. And Russia coming back to cover up Luchenko for Chudin. He's out on the wing. Mikhailov got away from Marty Howe's check. Marty Howe made a good run at him. But Mikhailov saw him coming and moved quickly. J.C. Tomley near center right with Marty Howe. Marty Howe fed it on an open wing. Nobody was there at all. And shoot him. The defenseman cleared it in. Marty Howe has it at the Canadian blue line. Out over it now. A pass on the wing. Coming down McGregor. Gulp one in off the board. Bernier is after it. Bernier stopped by Vasiliev. Now it's cleared near the blue line where Marty Howe shoots it to the corner. 4-2 to the score. Russia leading. Team Canada needing a goal with less than two minutes to go in the period. And coming out again, Vasilya for Russia, has a hole on the wing, shoot! And he grazed the side of the post with it. Just missed on the short side. In the center ice area, Mikhailov, number 13, back for Luchenko. A minute and a half left in the period. Four to two, Russia out front, and Anderson takes it. He lost it with a pass that Bernier takes it over the blue line, shoot! And he drilled a hard one wide. Now Hull with the rebound. Hull tried to center it. Mark Howe gets set to make a play to Schmier, and his shot is wide. Kapustin in the corner, brought it in behind his own net, came right in front of the goal with it. Kapustin coming out, a pass ahead for Anderson. Mikulov on the right wing. Mikulov got it in front. Kapustin all alone, and he stayed on it. He's in all alone. 55 seconds left of the period. Anderson pass on the right wing. Vikulov is stopped by Paul Schmier. Schmier lost it again. Now Vikulov stopped by Gordy Howe. Howe gave him the right on the board. Back of the net. <laughs> by Anderson. <laughs> Tip it ahead for Howe and failed to boost it out of cover. Now Schmier again turning. He has to hold it with his skate now with 31 seconds left in the period. 42 the score. Russia leading. And Canada needing a goal desperately before this period is over. 31 seconds remaining in the second period. We're going to have a chat via tape with Ralph Lashushin and Peter Walker 
of the embassy. We managed to corner them yesterday. They're very busy fellows connected with the embassy here, and we're going to get some of the background of life for Canadians in the city. Right off the draw, Cheevers had to make a stop with a skate save. Bombley's pass too far for Stapleton. Mark Howell, though, at the blue line, gave it to him. Then to J.C. Bombley again to Stapleton. Stapleton up for Gordy Howell. He has a little trouble controlling it. Then lost it to Vicky Law. Vicky Law to Aniston. Mark Howell him covered, though. They push at each other. With eight seconds left, Stapleton ahead for Backstrom. But he was offside at the blue line. And the play was called. That should kill the period. Just five seconds left to go in this second period. Gordy Howe tied it at 6.15 from Mark Howe as he tipped it in on Mark Howe's shot. Then Anderson made it 3-2 from Kapustin at 8.22. Shadilov on a power play, the second power play goal of the game for the Russians at 13.57. 4-2, five seconds left. Back to the Soviet blue line. Vasilyev comes back inside the line and the horn goes to end the second period. The score at the end of the second period, the Soviet Union 4, Team Canada, WHA 2. Canada has produced many great champions. However, the greatest champion of all, the world champion four times in horseshoe pitching, my pal Elmer from Wellesley, Ontario. Elmer, tell us, was it clean loving or what is it that, that developed this great talent? You missed, didn't you just miss it? Yes, man. That's the first one you've missed in a half an hour. <laughs> but you've done well. You've won more, four world championships. That's How many of these things have you put around a peg in succession? Six to nine. Six to nine in a row? Yes. Is that right? And, and you can do it just naturally, with no practice, no... I'll make you a bet that you can't put a horseshoe around a bottle of O'Keefe and the peg at the same time. How much? I'll bet you the bottle of O'Keefe. <laughs> What's better? That's All good right. enough. Well, Elmer, you have absolutely convinced me that you're the greatest athlete in the entire world. I've never seen a feat like that in my life. I think you've earned an O'Keefe. Here's to you. And here's to you, with O'Keefe. Television, you know, you, there's just no way that you, you can do it. Even pictures just frustrated. And 
you try to help the guy by holding your pool, but you get so mad at him, you just want to go out and just probably spear his eyes out. You know, you're well, trying to win. The Soviets, from standing by the boards watching closely in the last two periods, uh, the looks on their faces, they enjoy the hitting aspect and the rough aspect of the game as much as any Canadian team now. Oh, it looks at their uh, uh, number three out there. I just We were just watching it through a check after the whistle was blown to... Uh, to Serge Bernier, and I can remember in Toronto when Johnny McKenzie threw a check in him, he took five strikes backwards. Now, I don't know whether it means something to be at home or not, but uh, by the looks of it out there, they're uh, throwing a little bit of weight around. So it's at number 17. I'm quite surprised. Arlovac, yes, he likes to play it that way, too. Tom, I want to thank you for joining us and also wish you a happy birthday, which I think is tomorrow, your first birthday <laughs> ever spent in the Soviet Union. Right? I just hope it's a very happy one, Don. I'd like to say hi to my mom and dad in Kirkland Lake, and Folks back home in Niagara Falls. By all means. Tom, thanks again. Well, you know, the financing aspect of Team Canada is a mammoth one. The actual negotiations that began uh, back in the summertime, the survey trips over here to get the team ready and prepared to go, and finally they're here in Moscow. But believe me, it wasn't quite as simple as it sounds. Let's get more of the story now and how it all came about. Chris Lang of Hockey Canada. Series 74 has very closely paralleled the management of Series 72. And I'm personally uh, fortunate to have been able to be involved with both series. As you can see, running the series is a cooperative effort with the members of the CHA, Gordon Hughes and Jack Devine, representing the WHA, Ben Hatsk and John Bassett, with uh, Ron Roberts of the WHA Players Association, and of course, Doug Fisher and Lou Lafayette from Hockey Canada. We have had meetings now since April, averaging about two or three a month. The budget is well over $3 million. The uh, tour is connected with it at $3 million. So on a joint basis, it, it could be compared to a, close to a $20 million business on an annual basis. We're very interested to make sure the precedents that are established now will hold uh, for any future series that might be involved. In terms of the team, uh, Ben Haskin is the chairman. Bill Hunter is the manager. Of course, Billy Harris is the coach. They're involved in such things as obviously managing the team and, and the training camp and related things, plus the travel or whatever you have. Um, in terms of the series, Gordon Duke and the CHA is responsible for handling the Soviets in Canada, their travel, their accommodation, and also working with the officials. We've had an official training camp in Edmonton along with our training camp. The promotions committee is chaired by Lou Lefebvre of Ottawa, with Derek Holmes acting as the secretary. The responsibilities under the Promotions Committee are numerous. Jim Patterson is chairman of the Television Committee. Ron Stewart was responsible for the tickets. Stu McPherson looked after the press. Harry Littner looked after the miscellaneous promotions of the series. All in all, the revenues of the series flowed into the Promotions Committee, and these totaled some $3 million. Thus, you can see that Hockey Canada has been working with its constituents, the WHA, the WHA Players Association, and, of course, the CAHA, to bring to the Canadian public another international series. Hockey Canada is a cooperative effort combining all the elements of hockey in Canada, and we were glad to be able to assist to bring this venture to the Canadian public. Well, this is hardly the time to mention it, but the two networks are giving an award for the most gentlemanly players in the A-team series. It's a gold medal for each of them, and it's uh, the Caprice Medallion. And it's worth uh, well, considerably uh, over $200. And of course, made of gold, which is going up all the time. So the most gentlemanly player will find one somewhere in the series will receive that when it's all over. Now let's uh, look at some of the off ice activities of Team Canada 74 here in Moscow. They went to the Moscow Circus last night, before which they saw the people of the Canadian Embassy. Let's look in now. In a moment, Team Canada 74 will leave the Russia Hotel, their Moscow home for the special custom and certainly one of the highlights of any team in a foreign country, a visit to the Canadian Embassy. In Moscow, it's a special treat. The team is in their special outfits and they're a real hit with the fans. They have to go through the usually large throng of autograph seekers and the last to leave is usually Bobby Hull. Jean Huil is the model for the Russian hat that he'd like to turn into the Russian hat trick on the ice. Johnny McKenzie rapidly became famous over here for he 
rambunctious play in the Canadian four games. And good-looking Mark Howe is always a hit with the younger set. But Bobby Howe is always the last to leave. He'll stay until the last fan has been satisfied. And as is the case here, he'll send his wife and mother on ahead to the bus to keep them from waiting. The Canadian flag is a welcome sight in contrast to the somber Soviet guard. The team is greeted by Ambassador Robert Ford and Mrs. Ford, both ardent hockey fans who have been stationed in Moscow for 15 years. The embassy staff is also a great hockey crowd, and they don't miss the chance for autographs with so many of their heroes in their midst. The embassy prepared a special roast beef dinner with homemade pies and all the trimmings just in case some of the boys have been missing the good old-fashioned home-cooked meals. The Canadian embassy is in a 175-year-old building and the limit is 170 people. So the press and the fans will have to wait and come another day. All right, that was the uh, visit to the Canadian Embassy by Team Channel 1974 last night, and, uh, well, they aren't too diplomatic on the ice this evening, are they, Howie Makers? I sit there and shake my head. There's no way I can believe what's going on or what's allowed to go on. That's it's a, what's talking. allowed to go on, right. Yeah. The officiating has been just, just horrendous. Yeah, I mean, the guy just has to be, has, you know, blinkers on and, and, and eyeglasses he can't see through because the, the degree of viciousness out there... And not too far from the puck. I can understand these are professionals and they can get pretty sly, but they're away from the puck or close to the puck and they're giving it to each other. The referee's looking at it and skating away. Well, I hark back to one of our early games in the series, a feature you prepared for us on the viciousness of the Soviet team against the Czechoslovakia national team last year. I thought I'd goofed on that, you know. Four games in Canada, they played pretty good controlled hockey. Not one showing any sign, visual sign of viciousness, you know. Now when we get back home, they're playing exactly the same type of game they had to play in Czechoslovakia to win the world amateur title. Just tremendously tough, vicious hockey. And that's what they're doing out there now. They're finding a pretty good match in our team. We're not angels, you know. Now the Canadian team can always respond in that respect. But let's look at the goal scoring now in the period. Here I think is the first and only goal of the period by the Canadians that tied it up at two all. And it, funny. We'll play that again for you. Now watch the Russian go back and pick up the puck and not look at all. He know he thinks 19 should be over about three steps. And I'll bet you between periods he's getting it. Now watch the Russian pick up the puck. They do this all the time. They pass with the seat. Don't look where they're passing. This time it backfired. There's Young Howe shooting it. Dad going in front as he has so many times tipping it into the net. Just and a great goal. Say, a great giveaway for the Soviet team. And we've seen them do it more and more as the series goes on. Well, I think if we continue the bodily contact, and as we said at the top of the show, stay away from the stupid penalties, but golly, it's hard to do. I feel sorry for the guys out there. I don't think any of them have played two games like the last two they played here in Moscow, and they're being forced to play it. They're not playing it because they want to play it. I mean, no. they, any human wouldn't want to play it. Maybe. Well, there was an article in the paper, uh, we saw it, it was flown over to us here out of Montreal about how uh, the Soviets have said that if McKenzie in particular, and he's the one they seem to disfavor here so much, because of rough play. If they want to play it that way, the Soviets will have an answer for them. And it seems that this chippiness from the Soviet team was evident from the very first uh, play in Tuesday's game here. That's right. With the end of the stick, this is what hurts. Canadians will give you the elbow, give you the shoulder, and once in a while take a swing. No way you can get hurt. But they're digging with the stick, digging with the stick, and this with the stick. And, oh, that hurts. Well, what hurts most of all right now is the score at 4-2, to two, and now we're going to pick up a Soviet goal here in the second period. That's that pass back out no, to now again where his dad tipped it in. Okay, well, we uh, saw enough of the Soviet goals when they happen live, Howie. Yeah. Now, can this team come back in the final period, Team Canada, the way it's been going here tonight? Well, I think if we get a goal in that first 10 minutes, sure they can come back. Hey, listen, we've been playing good hockey, and we, right. at the worst, it should be a tie hockey game. Honest. Well, 20 
exciting and perhaps rough moments to go. And after the second period, the score is the Soviet four and Canada two. This is game six for Moscow. Одна из многих вещей, которые мне нравятся в Канаде, это рост наличных сбережений. Простой способ сберегать рубли и копейки. Вы только скажите в Торонто Доминин, сколько вы хотите сберечь и когда вы хотите вложить их в банк. Все остальное они сделают. Соответствующие суммы будут переводиться с вашего чекового счета на ваш сберегательный счет автоматически. Это так просто. А люди такие хорошие. Это банк, где люди составляют разницу. Well, you think it's rough out there on the ice. A little rough here with these eager Canadian fans from all over the country. Are you having a good time in Moscow? Real good. Real good. Where are you from? Barrie, Ontario. Yeah? How about Dawson City, Yukon? Well, there's the diversity of it from all over Canada. You, sir? London, Ontario. London. And Wasega Beach, Ontario. Raceway in Rexdale. Rexdale. All right. And here's a guy. He's got to be from Toronto or nearby. No, I'm not. I'm from Port Colborne, Ontario. There's no team in Port Colborne, right? Yeah, we have a team. We have a good team in Port Colborne. An intermediate. The Leafs are your team, huh? The Leafs. Well, they are my team, and I also am a Buffalo supporter now. All Leafs right. Supporter. All right. And a megaphone way up there at the top. They'll hear you coming. This is the leader of the cheering section, and boy, we got two games left. We're going to win all three of them. You lost your voice. Huh? Okay. Over here now we've got, so here's a young fella. Where are you from? Edmonton. Edmonton. All right. From Edmonton. Edmonton, Alberta. Yeah. Right. Hey, what do you think if we reinstate the uh, Warwick brothers, Grant and Dickie and Billy? How's that? Well, Tom, by the way, we've got these cufflinks from the city of Edmonton for you, as we gave to the Russians this morning. Hope you enjoy them. Thank you very much. Yes, it certainly is. All right. We out of time? All right. One more thing? I'd like to say how good the Russian people have been to us. Just the hospitality is just just fantastic. Even though, even though they don't speak our language, they have just been wonderful to us. Fed us well and kept us good. Glad to hear it, sir. Enjoy the rest of your stay now. Let's go back upstairs to Johnny and Howie. <laughs> okay, Don, uh, I think... I've that one all right, but uh, it's great to see so many people from so many areas across Canada. I think it is a good time with their team. Uh, it's just been a delight. Uh, uh, if y'all weren't heard, you were seen. I'm going to let me uh, 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 okay. uh, The team went to see the Moscow Circus last night, and then the uh, yeah, other people went to see the, the circus and training this morning. I went to see uh, Swan Lake at the Bolshoi. Uh, are you and I going to Swan Lake, or? No, I'm going to the circus. <laughs> <laughs> you fellows are giving me a night off, that is. Canada. Well, listen, how do we get that to start the second period? The first 10 minutes, the Canadians will be defending the zone to our left in the 16,000 stadium. Exciting hockey that we've known and appreciated. Set to go. Here's Bob Cole. Four to two, Russia leading, and the third period is underway. Gusev, a pass ahead at center ice. Harlamov again on the move. He's going in on Trombley, and his shot is stopped by Cheevers from close in. Frank Mahovlich near the blue line. Couldn't bring it out, but Henderson does with McGregor. A pass to McGregor. He kicks it across the line. And Van Steele have his back, but Henderson takes it. He sent it to Mahovlich. He shoots, and he hit the side of the net after the puck came off Gusev. A pass for Mikhailov coming out. Mikhailov for Russia, in with Petrov. And Herlamov, Mikhailov carries into the corner with it, stops. Mikhailov still has it. Now a pass to Gusev. And McGregor, slow in getting it out of his own zone. Flipped it up to center, and Petrov brought it right back in again. Took a shot, went high off Cheever's shoulder. Frank Mahovlich for Henderson, it went by him. And down the ice, 
It's icing against Team Canada. But Hermanoff was on the fly again. It's really where big ice tells the tale whether you can skate or not. And that Russian Hermanoff can really fly. He went to the outside of J.C. Tremblay, took it to his backhand, and forced Cheevers to make a great save. That's about the fourth time tonight that he's done that. Canadians have taken 35 penalties. The Soviets have taken 19 so far in the series. Bobby Hall faked at the back of the net. He left it there for Rick Lee as he come racing up the center. Now it's a pass to Hall, but it never quite got through. Here comes Yakushev. Yakushev over to Lebedev. Lebedev, number 11. He lets a shot go. And that's caught there by the goalkeeper, Jerry Cheevers. And he holds on for the whistle. Lacroix, for the face off, gets the drop, pulls it back for McKenzie, then loses it. It's knocked down in front of the net. The bouncing puck comes over to McKenzie, head to Lacroix, and he can't get to it. So the Soviet, Yakushev, took an elbow there from Johnny McKenzie. Here comes Lebedev racing into the corner. With Stapleton going over to cover him, he does, and takes the puck away from him. Jerry Cheevers takes a poke at it as the puck was lying loose back of the goal. Stapleton takes a look, he sees Hull flying down that left wing, he tries to give him that left wing pass, it's onside because it was touched. Hull takes it into the corner and holds it there for the whistle. Andre Lacroix is good on the face off, so they'll like to have him down in that zone, particularly when he tried to pull that one back for Bobby Hull to get his shot away. Meantime, coach Billy Harris goes to the complete change, Baxter goes to center. Gordy and Mark Howe with uh, Schmier and Smith back on the defense. Up front right around uh, the legs of the defenseman, Rick Smith, and now it goes down into Canadian territory with Gordy Howe racing in after it. Back of his own goal, he feeds that pass on the right wing to Paul Schmier. Schmier is a good puck carrier. He goes into center ice. He's knocked off balance by the Russian player Kapustin. Back comes uh, Vikilov on the right side, being shattered over there by Gordy Howe, and Howe has him tied up. Off the boards, but not out. Russians still have control. There's Mark Howe bumping with the Soviet player. Here comes uh, Ralph Backstrom, one on one, getting set, he shoots, and it's wide. Vikilov, at center ice, number 18. Over to Win Eason, at the Canadian blue line, and he's offside. Very rare thing to see the Russians go offside. And yet that's the thing that hurt the Canadian team so much here last Tuesday night. Every time they'd start to organize an attack, they were so eager and so anxious that they were getting one and two men offside. Bernier's line is out there now against Petrov, and it's taken by Tremblay. Tremblay over on the left wing with Tardis. Tardis back to Hula. Hula has trouble with holding it with his skate. And it's uh, Harlamov. Harlamov over to Petrov, and he loses control. And Hul is hit there by Bernier. Bernier still has control of it. Bernier works his way to the corner. Puck slides loose into the corner. Now it's back out to the line. It's being held. Here's where he takes a shot, then tries to slide it through. Instead of drilling it, it's back again. He shoots. Oh, what a save by Petrov. And there's Bernier. He'll lie awake all night wondering why these shots don't go in. This is his fourth eighth of opportunity. Look at Houle being the puck. Get it back to Bernier. Look at right on his stick. Look how quick he lets it go. He takes the look, lets it go right away. And Trish Hicks with the glove hand makes just a great save. That's the third time tonight he's robbed Bernier. The line is played exceptionally well. Well, Bernier, I think, has been robbed more often in the series than any other player. Here it comes again from another angle. Kept in by J.C. Shot, try to slide in front of the net. Now look at it come back to him. Look at the hole. There is the hole up high, and he was going for it. Anyhow, shot from the blue line is high, and it comes out on the left wing. Back after it. Tar and Bernier over to Tardis, too far. Dagunkov stopped at his own blue line, 
A pass ahead, knocked down by a who. He's in his own zone. Up on the wing is stopped by Sagunkov. Into the corner against Marty Howe. Yakushev on the other side. Yakushev centered it. And Pomley covered up for Canada. Put it on the board for Bernier. The Jean-Houl coming out with Marty Howe at center. In with Tardif. Tardif didn't see the pass. And Lebedev for Russia ahead to Shadreen. He has stopped. Hoole finding some skating room on the right wing. Coming back for Canada. Up over the line with Tardif. And it's broken up in front of the net by Sigankov. Then cleared by Shadilov down the ice. J.C. Tomley coming up to center for Tardif. Tardif was given a bump at the blue line. Here's Hull getting in front. And Bernier fanned on the chance in front of the net. Pass ahead offside was Lebedev. Up over center ice, so it's called back. Now Sigankov and Tardif have something going. Well, that's quickly erased as they both go off on a chain. We're nearing the five-minute mark of the third period. Four to two, Russia leading. Was 2 1 at the end of the first period. And Canada was outscored, same margin, in the second. Long pass, stopped by Stapleton at center right. Nikulov looking for that one. Ricky Lee stick handles up to center, barges down the right wing with McGregor on his left in front of the net. Now Lee back to the blue line. Frank Mahovlich trapped it, tried to give it to Lee again and failed. Lukchenko's pass, stopped by Stapleton. At center ice, Kapustin back to his own blue line. Got a relay pass. Comes it into the zone. Cheevers comes out of the net though and cleared it back of the goal. Cheevers, a pass up on the wing for Henderson. It went by him. Frank Mahovlich couldn't reach it. And the Russians in control again. Vikulov in the center ice area. A pass ahead for Anderson. He turns back. Now over on the other wing, Kapustin stick handled by Lee. Anderson took a shot. Got it again in front of the goal. And Lee was on the spot that cleared to Mahovlich with Anderson with him. Mahovlich going in. They call it offside on Anderson at the Russian blue line. Well, the Soviet team using three uh, forward lines and two men, Kuznetsov and Budinov, are on the bench. Maltsev was injured in the second period. He has not reappeared. In fact, he isn't even on the bench. So it's uh, three complete units that they have out there. They're going to try and maintain this two-goal lead. Mayor poked it ahead for Bobby. Back in his own zone to Smith. With Lacroix coming up with Holland McKenzie. But Gustav has the pass from Lacroix. Gustav ahead to Harlamov. He circles near his own blue line. Poked it ahead. Paul Schmier knocked it down. Gave it to Hull. Hull couldn't reach it. McKenzie at his own blue line stopped it. But Petrov was called offside anyway. And a face off coming up outside. A Canadian lion, one of the Canadian fans with a cowbell at the far side, apparently had it taken away from him, and he got it back again. Just gave it a jingle. That brings some whistles from the Russian fans. And now here's Mikhailov getting a break, and a slow shot is wide of Jerry Cheever's stick side. He was in very quickly, picking off a loose puck in front of the goal. Now McKenzie coming up with Lacroix. The claw over the line for Hull, but it didn't work. Petrov gets out across the blue line. McKenzie pushed him off the puck. Karlamov going in with Mikhailov. And Schmier sliding on the ice. Stops the pass. Bobby Hull can't find any room to get going. A pass to Lacroix. And Lacroix's pass again on a Russian stick. Schmier lost it. Two on one. Petrov going in with Mikhailov to Petrov. And one pass too many went by Petrov. In front of the Canadian goal. Here's McKenzie coming out. He has some room to center ice. McKenzie into Bobby Hull. And that's stopped by Mikhailov who cleared it down the ice. And the Russians are just content now with a two-goal lead and are checking furiously. Nearing the eight-minute mark of the third period. Hull again. Doesn't find any room. And Shadreen brings it in. Shadreen on the left wing with Yakushev. He was stopped. How lost it. Shadreen again a pass. And Cheever stopped that shot. Now Shadilov let it go over on the other side to Lebedev. He stopped by Schmier. Vasilyev back to Shadilov. And he fanned on his shot. Three men break out for Canada. Gordy Howe down the wing. Up over the line. Had it poked away by Shadilov. And Shadreen feeds it over to Lebedev. It went by him. It was a high pass. 
Marty Howe with 120 left before the middle of the period when they'll stop play and change ends, and Gordy Howe comes out. He comes to center ice. Right. Howe's pass in on the wing. Mark Howe has to wait for team members to get back on side. Gordy trying to help him. It doesn't work. Lebedev brings it in for Russia. He fell down as he spun around, went off balance. Now it's Mark Howe up with a shot. Stopped by Stigankov. He has the rebound, centered it. Shadreen is covering up in front. Mark Howe in the corner. Hit Backstrom with a pass. Marty Howe let it go. That went off a leg and went wide. Stigankov against Gordy and Mark Howe. And they get a whistle or a face-off in the Soviet zone. 4-2 to two hockey game. Team Soviet in the lead. And let's pause briefly for station identification. On the face-off, it comes back for Vikulov near the blue line. He has to back up again with Cardiff watching him. Now along the board, Danison ahead to Vikulov. It's fed into the corner a second time. Anderson over for Lutchenko. Out to center ice, and Ricky Lee stopped at his center. Now Cardiff moving forward. Put it over on an open wing. Lutchenko has it at his own blue line for Vikulov. Up to center ice, Kapustin up over the line. Kapustin going in on goal. And a backhand shot was wide of the Canadian net, but he went speeding in all alone. Bull back with Tardif for Canada. Bull stick handles over the line. Bernier catching up. Bernier gets in front of the net. Oh, and that's five times tonight for Bernier all alone. He couldn't control it at the last second. Another shot hit hold. And Bernier broke up a play just outside the blue line. Up at center ice, Tardif to Bernier. Bernier going in with Hull, shooting! And Bernier takes the rebound as the first shot was deflected. And Putin hangs onto it with a skate. And the play is called for a face-off in the Soviet zone. 14 seconds left before they change in. So this is an important face-off. Canada trailing by two goals. Four to two. Frank Mahovlich with McGregor and Henderson. Schmier and Smith. Every man up inside the line. Jerry Cheevers, the goaltender, is over at the Canadian bench talking to the team doctor, Jerry Wilson. Something wrong with his left hand. He's showing it to Jerry Wilson now. Can't afford to lose Cheevers, that's for sure. The way he's been playing in this series, just superb hockey. He's okay, apparently, and is heading back to the net. Jerry Cheevers gets a hand from the Canadian fans down to that end, and we're set to go to the left of Kretschak. Puck is cleared right away by Arlamov outside the line. Schmier in the center ice area. Shoots it ahead for Henderson. Henderson tried to go by Vasilyev and failed, and it's cleared to center ice again. There's the buzzer as Tretniak stopped the long shot from Smith. And they'll change ends and go at it for the final 10 minutes. The Soviet Union 4, Team Canada WHA 2. You're listening to Team Canada 74 on CBC Radio. Cheevers. 
Pavlich can't clear it. It's still in the zone where Petrov set it back of the net. McGregor has it for Canada. McGregor on the board. Gave it to Schmier in front of the goal up to Mahovlich. Mahovlich in the center ice area. Again, fed it to a Russian player, Harlamov. McGregor didn't see it. Harlamov pounced on it with Petrov going in. Shoot! Cheevers kicked that one out. And into the corner. Smith ran into Petrov. He's going to get a penalty. Petrov took a jolt from Smith. And he's pointing at Mahovlich now, Dombrovsky. He's calling a slashing penalty. Don't tell me we're getting two of them. I think he's, he's going to put two men in there. He's got Smith on the first one. I'm not too sure it isn't Harlamov that he got on Mahovlich. And I think that's just the way it is, Bob. So he called two on the one play. Oh, that must have been a dandy slashing effort by Harlamov if it warrants a call of a penalty because flashing has been quite prevalent throughout this hockey game. But Smith is off. Petrov and Harlamov is off for slashing Mahovlich. An uncommon call there. Bang, bang, around a whistle. And it'll put the teams five aside. Face off in the Canadian zone. And here it is. The Quag got the draw. J.C. Trombley coming out with Marty Howe. Marty Howe across his own line to center ice, up for Hull. Pass was tipped by Yakushev. Hull is in the corner, back of the goal. Can't control it. And Yakushev takes over for Russia. Coming out of his own zone, a long pass for Shadreen. Shadreen back to Yakushev, up over the line. He stops. Leads it back again. They're just killing time now. The Russians, they're leading 4-2 with... Eight minutes and 30 seconds left of the game. At center ice, Shadreen moving it in. Shadreen gets set, goes back of the net with it, tried to center it, and Cheevers just put his glove on it and got a whistle for a face-off in the Canadian zone. So the fans on both sides now, Soviet side and Canadian side, have quieted down as they're just checking the game out. Four to two is the score. Russia leading by the pair. And down to the right of Gary Cheevers. Lacroix with Hull. For Canada. Marty Howe and Tremblay. Back to the line to Gunkov. Shoot! His shot went wide of the net. Cheevers moving on it, but he missed the goal. Tremblay coming out across the line. He's up at center. Took a long shot. Petyak loved that. He'll hang on to it. And they get another face-off, but this time up to the Soviet zone, to the left of Tretiak. On Saturday, we're on the air, CBC Radio Sports from here in Moscow. At 11 a.m. time with game seven of the set, and again at the same time to complete the Soviet segment of the series. On the face-off, Backstrom put off stride. Gordie Howe on the porch, tried to knock it loose. And Gordy Howe gave Shadron a bit of a push. Shadron pushed him back. Now they have some words. That doesn't develop much further. Howe put the el elbow up at Shadron. Shadron put it back again. That's about it. The Russians are changing. Vikulov and Aniston come out. They're five aside at the moment. Rick Smith and Harlamov serving penalties. They have 53 seconds left. Maxstrom with Gordy Howe, Rick Lee, and Stapleton. Face off to the left of Petyak. Maxstrom got the draw, went after it, gave it to Howe. He didn't get the pass. And up to center right, Vikulov. Stopped by Gordy Howe, who stole it. And Howe carries it back in his own zone. Out to Maxstrom. Maxstrom pushed it ahead for Howe. He's on the goal. Gordy Howe up across the line, stopping inside the blue line. Looks for somebody free. Gives it to Stapleton. Stapleton back of the net for Backstrom. Backstrom to Stapleton again. Sigunkov covering him. And Sigunkov takes over. 
to Gunkov, ahead to Anderson, two on one again. Vikulov on his left, Anderson going into Vikulov, set him up neatly, but he couldn't make contact. Now Stapleton, ahead to Backstrom, he had a stick lifted by Anderson. Gordy Howe couldn't stop Vikulov, Vikulov circles back to his own blue line. Comes up near center, good Columbia move on Backstrom, the penalties are over, Vikulov got it into her line. Coming out of the penalty box, broke in behind the defenseman, and the pass came up through everybody quickly, and he just tipped it in. Five to two, Russia. This game is coming to you from the Luzniki Sports Palace in Moscow. Marty Howe wants to go at 
Lebedev. Now Lebedev is quite satisfied and skates away. Well, Marty pushed the linesman, and the linesman, that's the Soviet linesman, Nikolstev, put the hand on the hip. Now Dombrowski is trying to get him uh, there. Gordon Howe is over there trying to ventilate the subject. As uh, Doug Robb, the Canadian linesman, is there. He took a jolt from Henderson along the board and uh, was injured a little. But he's over there trying to cool out Father Gordon Howe. Mohavlich is there, and J.C. Trombley is there. So Marty Howe will get two and ten. Wait a minute, the Russian gate has been open, Fred. Now we'll see if Lebedev has a penalty. He's still on the ice near the Soviet fence. Well, I think there were, there were the penalties called uh, Lebedev, yes, and, uh, and Marty, and then Lebedev came up with the six. Well, it looks like two apiece and ten for Marty Howe. It's been a rather frustrating evening for the hockey players, to say the least. A 5-2 hockey game in this game coming to you from the Luzhniki Sports Palace in Moscow. Gambetti and Bob Cole as Marty House skates across to the penalty box on the far side. He'll have two and ten with uh, 4.56 remaining in the game. Canada trailing five to two and uh, their outlook certainly not bright as it's been uphill from the 25 second mark of the game when Mikhailov scored the first goal of the game at, at 2.43. Canada giving up a power play score by Vasiliev, and uh, since that time, the Soviets, uh, with their great speed, taking advantage of uh, penalties, came back with another power play goal by Shatilov, which uh, gave them a two-goal lead again in the second period at 4-2, to two. and uh, Harlamov coming out of the penalty box, spit in, spit a pass from Vikulov, and at the 13-minute mark, it was 5-2. So, three-goal deficit for Team Canada to pick up with less than five minutes to go. 15-04, these penalties. Marty Howe getting a minor and a misconduct. And Lebedev of the Soviets getting a minor penalty. So, five aside. Little repair job being done on the ice at the moment just inside Team Canada's blue line. Dombrovsky supervising that bit of work. It's McKenzie. McKenzie seizes every opportunity to have a chat with an official in the series. Based off just outside the Canadian blue line. Bobby Hull in his own zone. Hull winding up, gave it to McKenzie. McKenzie coming out at center ice is LaCroix. LaCroix going in with McKenzie right in on goal. And he centered it, but nobody was there but Vasiliev, and he played it down the ice. Team Canada moving back for it. And Bobby Hull coming out. This is a power play for Canada. Moving in is Lacroix. Lacroix tapped it to the goal mouth. They push at it, and the Russians get it away to clear it with Mikhailov stopping at his own blue line. He is stopped by McKenzie, but got his pass away before he was hit. Petrov back to Vasiliev. Vasiliev up to Petrov again in the center ice area. They're killing a penalty now. Mikhailov went in for a shot, and he whistled it wide of Jerry Cheevers. Bobby Hall back in his own zone. He's around the net, starting out. Team Canada moving it out over the blue line. Next man is Hall going in. Hall, he didn't see it. Vasiliev. And it's cleared by Mahovlich down the ice. Cheevers comes 35 feet out to play it by Petrov, but just barely. Then at center, Mikhailov. Back in his own zone to Lachenko and Vasiliev. Vasiliev to Lachenko again in the corner. Lachenko shoots it down the ice as the Russians kill the time on the penalty. 
28 seconds left of the penalty. And Hall going away again. At center ice, up over the line. Bobby Hall tried to do it himself. Bromley stopped it at the blue line for McKenzie. McKenzie faked the shot, gave it to Lacroix, who fell down. Now it's a pass by Mark Howe. Here's Lacroix to the side of the net. Back to Lacroix. They jam at it. McKenzie couldn't drive it in. Then he centered it. Again, Jack went down. It comes back to the line. Another drive right in front. And a scramble. Hull couldn't jam it across the blue line. Here's McKenzie. Oh, he tried to hit the top corner and just missed it. Deep Canada all around the net, but can't get it in. Into the corner, Shadreen stopped by Lacroix, and the play is stopped. Lacroix and Fredjack are having some words now. A lot of traffic around the Russian goal, but nobody could get it by Fredjack. McKenzie tried to hit that top corner. You could see him pick it out, but he lifted it too high. Just to sort out that penalty situation, Marty Howe got a 10-minute misconduct. And it was Lebeda with the high stick that got the two minutes, and that gave Canada the advantage there. And they had one good chance, but as Bob mentioned, that traffic around the net, just too much Hull and Lacroix getting tangled up in there. They were inside the circular crease. And two minutes and 41 seconds left. Russia leading by three goals, five to two. The pass comes to center right. Rick Lee at his own blue line. Over on this side for Mark Howe, going up with Gordy Howe in the clear. He shoots! And Petjak made a nice stick save on that low shot by Howe. Mark Howe keeping it in. Gordy again loose. Mark Howe shooting. And stopping that one was Lutenko. The pass coming to center. Vikulov going in with Kapustin. He took a shot, deflected into the crowd. As it went off the stick of Rick Lee, and it went up over the glass into the crowd. 2.09 left to play in the hockey game. Russia in complete command now, leading by three. It was 2-1 at the end of the first period and 4-2 at the end of the second period. Arlamov, having served a penalty, came on the ice and got a break in front of Cheevers all alone. Nikulov setting him up in 13 minutes. And that was the fifth goal. Russia changing again on the defense. Shadilov and Sigunkov, the big line of Arlamov and Petrov is broken up. Shadreen is at center ice. Arlamov out on the left wing with Lebedev on the right side. Lebedev took a shot again deflected over the glass into the crowd. So Mikhailov and Petrov have lost Arlamov on this ship. He's out on the left wing with Shadreen and Lebedev. So Yakushev is probably ailing a game. Pass ahead for Tardif too far down the ice. It'll be icing. It went over the goal line, and it's icing as Tardif could not catch up with it. Yes, it may have been a costly victory here. Bob Maltsev, as I mentioned, did not uh, come back to the bench for the third period. Yakushev is sitting there uh, almost by himself, and uh, Coach Kalagan had used three lines. Now he uh, has the shuffle act going with Yakushev uh, apparently hurt again. And, of course, it could be with a three-goal lead this late of the game, he'll be resting. Yakushev, who has a damaged right knee, torn ligament, suffered in Canada, and missing the first game here, but he's playing tonight. But you can see, not up to par, not 100%. Lebedev lost it in his own zone. Shadreen cleared it out on the boards to center ice. Vikulov moving in. Vikulov lost to the game Schmeer. And Schmeer back of the net for Tardif and Bernier. Tardif has the puck to Bernier. Bernier couldn't get by Shadreen. Rick Smith goes back forward with a minute and a half left in the hockey game. 5-2 Russia leading. And they'll take control of the series with this win tonight. Schmeer put it by Sigunkov, but it hopped over the boards near the Canadian bench. And the play is stopped with 119 left to go. Taking a look down at the two doctors, and uh, Dr. Uh, Mark Young, um, I noticed him with a uh, cut underneath the eye and a big black eye, and I asked him uh, if he got the number of the fellow that hit him, and he said no, it was the puck that went flying over the board that he needed medical attention. They've got a face-off coming up in the center ice area. Frank Mahovlich with Henderson and McGregor, Lee and Stapleton. 
Petrov, Mikhailov, and Harlamov. Petrov is center ice. Pass it back to Gusev. Gusev coming up near the center ice red line to Petrov again. They'll just hang on to the puck if they can now and kill the last minute and a half of the hockey game. Just about a minute left now as it comes down the ice to Mikhailov. Knocked away by Henderson. Less than a minute to go in the game. 55 seconds. 5 to 2 Russia. So this one is in the bag for the Soviets. And the next game Saturday, the last game Sunday. Stapleton comes up over the line with Henderson. Back to Mahovlich. Mahovlich put it on the boards. And then Steelyev out to Gusev. Gusev to center. Harlamov stops it up the blue line with 35 seconds left. Gusev takes over. Gusev up to center right. He comes back again. Hit McGregor with his pass. Mikhailov tossed it back to Petrov. Petrov over on the other side to Gusev. Base on this planet. Lee. Oh, Rick Lee starts fighting with Harlamov. And they've got a real old Donnie Brook going out there now, and Paul Spears is squared off as somebody. And well, this is what we were afraid would happen earlier, and what the officials will do about this, we have no idea, but Rick Lee started with uh, Harlamov. They've had a feud going all night long. And um, there is one question that becomes patently obvious, Howie. How are we going to pick the most gentlemanly player at the end of the series? The two goalies are standing there talking to each other, and the substitute goalies were almost at it. Well, Don McLeod uh, went into the fray. He went in to pull Vasiliev off because Vasiliev had jumped on into a one-on-one -on -one situation, and uh, he went in and uh, pulled him off, and then he skated away. Now, what's going to happen? Uh, the scoreboard is so full and the place is so loud, we're just wondering how we're going to get any information as to what the outcome of uh, this might all be. It was a rough game. It was a very chippy hockey game. They were, there was a lot of spearing going on. There were a lot of things that had happened during the game. Karlova was the first to leave. He goes right to the dressing room. And the players are... They're not even, the Russian players are refusing to shake hands. Gordy Howe is shaking hands with one or two of them. The Russians, the Russians are being called back to the ice to shake hands. The Canadians are remaining out there on the ice to shake hands, but the Russians have gone to the dressing room. I see Shatilov, Vasiliev, Tretchak, Vikulov, Siginkov, they have remained out there to shake hands with the Canadian team, but the rest of them have refused to shake hands, and I don't ever recall seeing this happen in international hockey before. And as they turn to skate away, the officials still remain out there at center right. Now, it's difficult to describe it. It's hard to explain it. It's hard totally impossible to rationalize it, but it's a group of hockey players who are high strung. They, of course, are very nervous and very exhausted. Tempers have flared all night. A lot of players took a lot of shots at each other. There was a lot of spearing going on, which in my opinion, next to kicking, is the worst infraction of all in hockey. And there was far too much of that let go.